Would you believe that scared the shit out of me as a kid? Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Star Fox. It's about time I got to this series. Starting off, we have four little controls and a little tutorial for the controls. If you actually press any of the buttons, the R-Wing on screen will do them. I prefer Control Cell A, the first one, just because it's what I'm used to. Uh, training mode is basically the first level's aesthetics, but it gives you very little enemies and just movement tutorials. And now we have a difficulty select of sorts. We have levels 1 in the center, 2 on the left, and 3 on the right. Each one is in uh, ascends in difficulty as you go further on. However, they all have the same start and end points, Corneria and Venom. We're starting off with level 1, but we are doing all three of them. Corneria, the base. Star Fox team, our last resort is to counterattack Venom. Good luck. Good luck. That might be the first voice acting I can think of in any first-party Nintendo game, because Super Metroid had some, but that didn't come out until a year later, I think. Also, wow, look at the Super Nintendo trying its best. Yeah, Star Fox, just due to its visual approach, which is very groundbreaking for the system, admittedly, using, I think this was the Super FX chip, uh, it has some slowdown issues, to say the least. So there are uh, hacks out there that boost the frame rate up to what it should be, or at least what the system could handle if, say, it was overclocked. What I just got, there are twin blasters, which change our lasers from one to two, and this doubles the damage, I believe. The way I unlocked this specific item was actually by flying underneath all those arches a second ago. Also, I gotta say, uh, before I start getting towards the mechanics, the little start of level thing for Corneria is probably one of my favorite video game level starts I've ever seen. I don't know why, there's just something about it. It might be nostalgia, it might just be the kind of just cool nature of it all. There's something nice about that. Throughout every stage, occasionally your three buddies will either get chased by or start chasing enemies. I don't think anything happens if you just let them chase the enemies, although you still can't shoot it down, they'll re regard you like saying, Hey, what the hell, guy? Uh, but if you're chasing them, uh, if, you're, if they're being chased, rather, you want to shoot the enemy immediately, because otherwise they'll run low on HP. And while your three buddies don't really do much of anything aside from the occasional time you save them, they'll fire a few single lasers out at enemies, and by that I mean in the center of the screen, very unlikely to hit anything. Uh, the main reason they're there is for score purposes, because the higher their HP, your HP, and the amount of enemies you kill at the end of a stage, the higher your, your overall score. Going back to the Twin Plasters, though, you can get a second upgrade to it, which makes you fire more or less orbs of energy, but you can't actually get that until the second stage, I think, of any given pathway. Be careful of any given objects in a stage, because if you get hit, yeah, there's a big crunch. And if you get hit on your wings in particular, they can become damaged to the point where they get smaller, and it basically gimps your movement. Uh, you are not going to be able to maneuver as well. Plus, if you have any upgraded attacks, uh, you're going to be put back down to level 1, which sucks a lot. This blue, weird star thing in front of me is a checkpoint. It also restores, I believe, half of your health. Maybe a fourth. I forget the exact amount. That yellow one restores a fourth of your health no matter what, that's a supply ring. There's also several ones that show up usually, I think, late in level one and earlier in levels two and three. And that's mostly the items you'll be finding throughout the game, but occasionally you will see things that look similar to Twin Blasters, but they're spheres. Those are your Nova Bombs slash Smart Bombs in Star Fox 64, which are screen nukes, but they also do good damage. And now it's time for the first boss of the game, which is the thing we saw in that intro cutscene. This is the Attack Carrier. The thing is about bosses in Star Fox is whenever you see like a red and yellow flashing section, that's the weak point. Shoot that to damage it. The attack carrier, when it opens up either side of itself, is shooting out enemies for you to shoot down. A lot of other ones will just fire projectiles, but in the first phase here, it's shooting outright enemies at you. Thankfully, they open uh, in sequence, never all at once, and even then, the mooks they shoot at you at this point don't really stand much of a chance, especially if you still have twin lasers. Though I should note, similarly, if you die, you'll lose the twin lasers. After you take out its first three weak points, the face and jets become the weak points. 
Uh, how you want to be careful because the projectile shooting is potentially the strongest type in the game, if I recall correctly, and it can take some real damage out on you. However, if you just spam the fire button while aiming at its head, you can complete the first stage, no real issue. Corneria is the first stage. It was one I was able to beat consistently as a kid, and that says something about the age I first played this at. I'll talk more about that in a few moments. But at the end of every stage is when your score is tallied. You get a percentage of score, and I'm not exactly sure what determines what percentage. I want to say enemies are at least upwards of 80% of what you take out, including the boss fights. Then it tallies your health together as well as your uh, other characters, and you just get a total score, uh, which is the percentage multiplied by 1,000. Or actually, no, 100. Uh, you get an extra credit, which is an extra life, after the first 10,000, and I think it's every 20,000 after that. But now it's time for the asteroid belt. Andros's forces intend to build a base in this area. Destroy their rock crusher. Good luck. Okay, now when you're in the space levels, you get an extra thing where you go into cockpit view. This is more or less so you can have an easier time shooting things down. Because in the space levels, obviously there's no planet right below you, so that means you actually have much... Hard, eh, it's much harder to dictate your perspective in these levels, thus this mode. You can only use it in the space levels, and it's basically just so you have the targeting reticule. reticule. Uh, on the whole, this stage in particular is where things can start to get a bit more dangerous just due to the amount they start to throw at you. Level 1 on the whole is still going to be fairly safe travels, but you still want to be careful. These asteroids, uh, the silver ones are indestructible, barring one occasion, whereas the yellowish brown ones, they can be destroyed with a laser or two. Now, when it comes to the characters in the game, we're playing as Fox McCloud, the son of James McCloud, the captain of the original Star Fox team, though I think that was only made canon maybe in the sequel slash remake, which was 64. Uh, in terms of the other crew, we got Slippy Toad, who is the frog. He is the mechanic for the team. Falco Lombardi, who's actually the better pilot, but he's not the main character, therefore he doesn't do nearly as well. He's kind of this the pompous guy. I think Knuckles... Uh, then there's Bucky O'Hare, the senior member of the group, and the only member from the original Star Fox is still there. Uh, in this game, like I said earlier, they're practically worthless. They're just there to be score fodder. Uh, but in the remakes and sequels, they get much more of a purpose. I'm not actually sure if letting them shoot down their own targets actually influences your score, though. It might, but I'm not entirely certain about that. Now, there is one interesting thing about the asteroid belt in that you can access technically two stages through it involving these little chains of meteors, slash asteroids rather, but I'm not going to go over that until after we finish the main stage, so we'll cut back to here in a few moments. There's also a second twin blasters you can get in this stage from, I think, destroying a certain meteor. Actually, it might, it might be not destroying, like the little triangle meteors we saw earlier. I'm not entirely certain about that. I should stop saying meteors, asteroids. But it, that, it, that is useful to get, but I get another one later on anyway. I do recommend saving your smart bombs for any given boss fight, just because while some levels later on can get kind of crowded in terms of enemies, your standard blasters are going to be more than enough for it. The extra damage you get in through Nova Bombs is more worth it in the long run. Now, my history with Star Fox is I actually grew up with this particular game. Uh, well, we had it on my, it was my brother's cartridge on my dad's Super Nintendo, because my brother didn't own any of the consoles growing up, in fact. Although, actually, no. He now owns that specific new Super Nintendo, uh, because it got busted and he bought it off my dad and fixed it up. The Super Nintendo we have in the house now is mine. But at the end of the day, I just grew up playing this game, but I sucked hard at it. Uh... I was lucky if I could get past the third stage, which admittedly, the third stage on level one is probably the hardest stage out of the five in terms of the boss fight, but I'll get more into that later in this part. For right now, we have to face the Rock Crusher. This thing has eight weak points to start, but it rotates between four of them at a given time. These little diamonds will open up after a certain amount of time, after which they just start spam firing standard blasters at you, and then it rotates itself and you have to shoot the other ones. That's one thing I like about this game, they actually keep weak points more or less open in a chain so you can focus yourself better. Uh, you can get good damage on this phase really quickly just by spam firing the Noble Bombs because you'll take out almost all of them at once. 
But one thing I have to note about cockpit mode here in the space section is that I think it's actually a bit worse for boss fights, as you don't get a real good judge of where you are in terms of your hitbox. Because I, I, I don't... I'm not actually certain if your hitbox in this mode is the actual Arwing's hitbox or if they change it for it. Either way, during this phase, he just starts spam firing that one laser at you, just spam fire it back at him and he'll go down fairly easily. The asteroid belt's not a very hard stage. There's a lot more going on in it compared to Corneria, but overall, not much to worry about. Also, I've always loved those sound effects for all the party members speaking. Uh, there's just something really charming about old NES, N64 garbled speech like that. Though I'll always be more of a fan of this than the Banjo-Kazooie actual burping speech. <laughs> Either way, now we're going to be heading off to the third stage, which is the Space Armada. However, before we do that, I want us to head back into Asteroid Belt. I basically just restarted the game at this point to show this off. We want to head back into the Asteroid Belt, and in particular, like I said earlier, we want to cut back towards where those little chains of meteors were. What we want to do is first off grab the Twin Blaster that was there this time, because I did something differently. And when we get to those meteor chains, get as close to them as possible before taking out the meteor in the center. Doing this for all three of them is going to cause a different meteor to spawn later on in the stage. You'll know it looks a bit different because it has a face on it for some reason. And when we see that, we want to spam our blasters at it until it gets destroyed. In which case, a little secret gate opens up for us. There it is right there. Fire, 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 fire. And there it is. Just enter that. And now you're in more or less the warp zone for the game. Welcome to the black hole. But not just the black hole, as the stage title itself actually is, this is... The awesome black hole. This space graveyard, created by Andross's experiments, is where your father vanished. Fox. Oh yeah, that's right, uh, James was a thing by this point. The black hole is an infinite looping area. Uh, it's a very good place to get some twin blasters spread out, but what the thing is with this stage is, there is actually two new things we can explain. One is this little thing in front of me. If you shoot this thing three times, an extra life appears in the middle of it. Grab that. Actually, I think the extra credits might be continues, not extra lives. But the main thing with this is, not only is it a good place to stock up on twin blasters because the gates like this can hide them or Nova Walls behind them, but we see that checkpoint gate in front of me? That's actually a warp gate. There are three of these in the stage and they loop. I believe it goes from Sector Y to Sector Z to Venom? But the thing is, it warps you to either Sector Y, the second to the last stage in level two, the Venom at the end of level one, or Sector Z in level three. And that's actually a very good way to get back to things if you die late in level three. The Andros Space Armada. The Space Armada consists of powerful battleships. Destroy their energy cores. Good luck. This is probably the more, most, I don't want to say it's the hardest level out of level one, but it's definitely the one I had the most trouble with historically due to the boss fight. There is a lot going on in this stage, a lot of enemies flying at you, a lot of shots being fired at you, and a lot of things to shoot back at. But while we go through the stage, I think it's about time we go over the storyline for the game, because you can figure out that this Andros guy's the villain and such, but obviously being a 1990s Super Nintendo game, well, 93, uh, this is going to be a game where you get most of the story from the manual. Background story, the origin of the Lilation Conflict. The Lilat solar system, located near the center of the Milky Way galaxy, is made up of several bountiful planets. No fewer than three of these worlds were home to civilizations teeming with industrious inhabitants. The other planets in the system provided boundless natural resources. The comfortable lifestyle enjoyed by the Lilations was the envy of the galaxy until the coming of the evil Emperor Andros. Emperor Andros was once known as Dr. Andros, a scientific genius who worked in an advanced lab on Corneria, the fourth planet in the Lilat system. Ever since his childhood, Andros's brilliance outshone that of the other children. As an adult, Dr. Andros began developing a powerful engine based on hyperspatial energy. Selfish and blinded by ambition, he repeatedly conducted dangerous experiments in the heart of Corneria's most populated city. After many warnings from the planet's ruling council, he was finally banished from the planet for endangering the inhabitants of Corneria. First off, though, before we continue on that, three times throughout the stage we get put into major ships within the system. 
And this one is a bunch of shield, which is basically a second health bar that I think allows you to take three extra hits. And the thing is about this stage, you're sent back into the non-cockpit view once you're in the ships. And you actually probably want to switch back to it with a select button once you're out of the ships, but I always forget to do that. The primary thing about those is you really want to keep an eye out what's around you, just because uh, the frame rate goes back to a higher... The, the, the frame rate boosts when you're inside of the ships, rather. And it can be quite the surprising speed increase. You're going to want to use your retros, as I think Bucky said there. Not Bucky, that's uh, Bucky O'Hare. That's a different thing. Wait, have I been calling Peppy Bucky the entire time? Shit, sorry. Uh, his name is... Peppy Hair. Bucky O'Hare is a different cartoon slash video game from the NES era that I also played a lot as a, of as a kid, though I never really got past the first half of the second stage when I was a kid, because that game is hard. Uh, but he does warn you during the interior section to use your retros with the B button, because the boosted frame rate uh, is used to your advantage, uh, your disadvantage, because you really do go fast, and that's where you really want to use it there, because that little caution bar will likely hit you. Also, in every single one of these ships, there's usually not only an item, but also some enemies. And you're going to want to spam fire whenever the enemies show up, as well as the core, because otherwise you'll just run right into it and you won't destroy the ship. And I think in order to get the most points, you need to do that? Either way, back to the plot. Out of sight, out of mind, the inhabitants of Corneria soon forgot the menace of Dr. Andros. One day, however, Corneria's small defense force detected some unusual happenings on Venom, the first planet in the Lilac system. Strange, unidentified flying objects were monitored and maneuvering above the planet in large numbers. It was not long before the self-appointed Emperor Andros, who had fled to Venom, declared war on Corneria. The planet Venom had been completely remade by Emperor Andros into a gigantic military base. Andros hoped that with his, his military power, he could soon control all the planets in the Lilac system. General Pepper, the commanding officer of Corneria's defense force, decided to dispatch the super high-performance combat ship Arwing to the defense of the planet, even though it was in the prototype stage of development. Because of the urgency to the th uh, of the threat to Corneria, however, he did not have Charon to train pilots for these advanced fighters. Yeah, that's a weird thing. I think I may have talked about it a little bit earlier. But the Arwings in the later games are just Star Fox's property. But in the first game, they actually belong to Corneria. And now we're coming up on the boss fight. And the boss fight for this stage might be one of the hardest in the game, despite being level 1. And that's mostly just due to... First off, I think you're forced into... Uh, our wing view and not cockpit view for this stage. Also, don't really shoot these doors, it's not worth doing. Uh, the thing is with this stage is, or this boss, is the first things you have to target are technically in the background. And without a targeting reticule, since you don't have one in our wing view, it's really hard to judge your perspective and depth perception in order to hit them. Uh, thankfully, I think each Star Fox game from here on, I, I'm, I think Star Fox 2, the game that was only finally released on the SNES Classic, had it even. The later games would have targeting reticules in Arwing mode, so you could still see what you're aiming at. A very good refinement, might I add. But this is a hard boss. We're coming up on, I believe it's called the Attack Core. The boss itself is the thing in the center of the room. However, it's guarded by a shield that's powered by three little generators around the room. And we need to shoot these to access the actual boss fight. Occasionally, from near these power receptors, these weird little ships that are firing at you will come out, which is the main way of attacking. But another thing you need to look out for, the little beams of electricity coming out of the attack core, or uh, in between the generators, does damage you. So you need to watch out for that, especially with this high one. Occasionally, the room will reverse its rotation, but thankfully, this fight I ended up taking care of very quickly, all things considered. Plus, uh, the generators are vulnerable from the moment they first come on screen, and then once you destroy the third one, the power core opens up, and then you just spam fire at it to kill it very quickly. The Space Armada stage section isn't that bad. In fact, I think it's still pretty easy because it's level one, but wow, that's a crisp three frames a second there. Uh, the boss itself is easily one of the most annoying in the game. I won't say the hardest in the game, but it's definitely one of the most annoying. Thankfully, from here on out, level 1's fairly plateaued in difficulty. Minus one thing. And we'll get to that next part. 
But with that, I'm going to end this off here. I'll go over the last portion of the plot from the manual next part. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in part two when we go into stage four and five, finishing off level one before finally starting off level two. Probably. See you guys then.